the 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 way God does things is very 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 um intriguing if you will so say that last line one more time I'll write it down um what I just said yes I said the the wealth full of ideas the wealth full of ideas the wealth full of ideas I gotta write that down yeah, because yes. the downloads that he just gives me, I believe that he gives them to everybody. They just don't pay attention. And so they're right. looking for something um, that's actually there already. But because this is supernatural and um, it's a supernatural dialogue, if you will. It's a supernatural dialogue. It's, well, in this time span, we would call it downloads, right? Yeah. So if it doesn't sound mystical, then right. they're not going to pay attention to it. But we're not looking for things that are mystical. We're looking for things yeah. that are divine, Right. Yeah. We're looking for things that are prophetic because that means that we've tapped into the now and possibly the future. Yes. yes. Right. So going oh, back God. to um, Cain and Abel and, and Seth being the replacement son. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible didn't skip a beat. It never gave the heartbeat uh, of how that e affected both of those parents, Adam and Eve. It never yes. talked about that. So it leaves us to utilize our imagination of the pain yes. that just not that mother felt, but, but that that father felt knowing mm -hmm. that that son was actually murdered. Not by a, a crazy animal because they were out there hunting, not from um, the enemy that saw them and crossed the enemy's line and came and, 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 you know, devoured them or not by the giants that were in the land. But I found out that my son is dead because my other son killed him. That had to be very, very traumatic. That's one of that's that's one of the first traumatic uh, uh, episodes that we learn of, and how we align that with right now. There is a yeah. murder spirit in the land, and then the Bible says, "In the last days, it will be father against son, son against father, daughter against mother." You understand? And so. And we're actually in that time span right now, prophet. Help us, Lord. We're in that time span right now. And so now it's oozed itself over back into the body of Christ, right? Where it is a diabolical uh, a target, priest against priest. Yes. So th this time span, people don't like the, oh, we don't live in the Old Testament. We live in the New Testament. Yeah, but your actions is of the Old Testament. The New Testament, this is this is not a New Testament action. Mm, it's an old wineskin. Say it one more time. It's an old wineskin action. <laughs> now talk about that for a second. <laughs> Talk about that for a second. The old wineskin and, and wrap it around the Cain and Abel situation and Seth being produced. Oh, are you walking deep and heavy? <laughs> are you walking deep and heavy? <laughs> oh, God, because I heard you say, woman of God, this was the first murder. Mm hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. This was the first, uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. This was the first conscious murder. Ooh. Talk about it. Uh, yes, because 
the first murder was of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But they were not conscious of their decision because they not yet had knowledge of good and evil. It was the dispensation of time of innocence which brought in consciousness. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing, Apostle Jill. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, Lord. <laughs> and so because it opened up, the, it ushered in a new dispensation of time, which was consciousness. Mm -hmm. This also ushered in the murder spirit, the murder spirit, because sin, mm, the murder is sin. Murder is a sin. Uh -huh. Murder crept in through Adam and Eve when they ate of the tree of knowledge and evil. Mm -hmm. And so it brought in the dispensation of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So when Cain and Abel, when that murder happened, it was a conscious murder, which means I had an intention behind it. I know why I'm murdering you, but I don't care because of the jealousy and the strife. I'm doing this because I want to. Come I'm on. Aware of my actions. I know exactly why. I have an agenda to murder you. Oh. It was premeditated. Talk, prophet. Oh, it was premeditated, apostle. Oh, so now in the body of Christ, where the spirit of murder has crept in, it's not unconscious. It is an agenda of murder. When you just said that scripture about sons against fathers and fathers against sons, and these are agendas, but what is the agenda of the spirit of murder? Why do you want to murder? Mm -hmm. Why have you found fault in your brother and sister? Mm -hmm. Why have you come to accuse them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it also gives insight. Oh, God, this thing is good. It also gives insight because if there is a murder, you forgot the consequences of your actions because there is a judge. That's right. And now we must go to court so that God can judge your actions. And the woman of God, Apostle Jill, said it was premeditated murder, mm -hmm. which defines when you get into premeditated murder. Now you have brought us into uh, the degree of, of a cause of a criminal charge. There are degrees to certain criminal charges. Mm hmm. So now this takes us into, so now I want to look into what is a premeditated murder. Now I almost want to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know about it? See, because what do you want to know about it? You want to know the, the definition of it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me give you the definition of it, right? Um, malice is the word if we want to parallel it biblically malice right so malice is the premeditation or the predetermination required as an element of some crimes in jurisdictions a unique element for the first murder or aggravated murder in a few the term is still used. It is as technical meaning that the char the changed substantially has the charges has changed substantially over time. All right. The first murder is the intentional killing of another person by someone who has acted. It is important to note that the exact definition. A first degree murder, hold on a second. A first degree murder, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? I was reading something, uh, but then they went somewhere else. But watch this though. Let's start. Let's start from here. First degree murder is the intentional, here it is. The first degree murder is the intentional killing of another person by someone who has acted willingly, 
deliberately or with planning. Generally, there are two types of first degree murder, premeditated, intent to kill, and felony murder. This definition um, will focus on first degree murder involving premeditated intent to kill. So now we have to deal with, in a court of law, here it is, the prophet's job is to bring justice. Uh huh. And so now the Lord says he's also looking at, we have the spirit of competition. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was never because God told you to do it. It was because you lusted after something. You wanted to be first. You wanted to outdo your neighbor, your brother. Yes, come And on. so because you feel that they won the advantage, instead of you looking at it with the right heart and with the right posture that this is for God, mm -hmm. this, was, this was selfish gain. This mm -hmm. was about you. This wasn't about God. Mm -hmm. And so your, comp your competitive nature is what caused you to be offended to now have an agenda to murder the other person oh god my god this is so deep mm -hmm. and so the prophet's job as a mediator mm -hmm. as as an advocate somebody to stand in the gap okay 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 i understand what's happening lord okay so the lord says in the body of christ right now we really are in the courtroom and God really is the judge mm -hmm. and there are intercessors. Mm -hmm. There are people that will intercede. There's a jury. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. I see what's going on, Lord. I see. And so the Lord is a righteous judge. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Because now the court is go governed. The court of the Lord is governed through grace and mercy mm -hmm. oh god which means there is a period of time where the person can be redeemed for their actions and their wrongdoing if they allow the lord to bring them into a place where they are aware of their actions they're aware of their wrongdoing and they repent not by their mouth but they repent as to be sorry for, for what they did for the for the uh, wickedness that overcame them. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. But if if they refuse to repent and they disobey the prophets of the Lord, because the intercessors are to pray and the prophets are are to turn the heart of the people back to the Father. Mm -hmm. But if you resist the correction. Now the Lord says, because I'm a righteous judge and you have transgressed, now I have to judge you according to your actions. My God. So now we're dealing with the consequences of the um, crime, if you will. Ooh. We're dealing with the consequences of the crime that has been committed. <clears throat> Watch this. <clears throat> A premeditated intent to kill requires that the defendant had intent to kill and some willful deliberation um, to kill rather than killing on an sub sudden impulse. <laughs> Good God from a burning bush, right? And so because we do not, murder is, is when you are responding to a sudden impulse, right? So let's, let's draw a picture, if you will. So you and I are engaging. The engagement is communication, it's audible, right? But we're in the same room. And now this communication turns into an argument. That means a difference of opinion on both sides where we can't reconcile, nor are we in our right enough mind to respect one another because both of us are pushing our point, right? And so with African-Americans or anybody else, we begin to get enraged. 
right? Because we start raising our voice. I know I do. I start raising my voice or I start lowering my voice. Now, if my voice is raised high, I'm good. I'm good. I'm still in my conscience mind. But as my octave begins to minimize all the way down to almost a whisper, if you were smart, you would get out of the room or out of the house. You understand what I'm saying? Because at that moment, I done shift. I feel God. I done shifted out of my conscience mind. Right. And now I am out. I'm going into another space of uncontrol. And we never talk about the levels. The church doesn't. That is talk about the levels of self-control. Now I'm out of control. Right. Because my voice watches the octave is getting lower and lower. The volume is getting lower and lower. I'm shifting out of consciousness of control to being totally out of control. And I'm yielding to it. Now, when you are totally out of control, right, that means that the enemy within begins to give instructions on how to resolve what's going on. And so because I feel like you're not hearing me, then I need to silence you. And so I kill you. I murder you. Suddenly. Completely remove your existence. Thank you. Completely. Right when? Right now. I ain't got time to, 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 to plan this thing out. I'm moving on a sudden impulse. That's murder. That's how. Yes. You didn't think about it. That you didn't even think about it. You're and out of control. You're totally out of control. And this how the court system. I was reading this from Cornell uh, Law School, LIT, Legal Information Institute. Uh-huh. Right now, it says there are several factors indicating predetermined. I mean, premeditation and deliberation. These include the lack of provocation from the victim, actions and words of the defense before and after the killing, any threats from the defendant. And you know, we threaten one another. If you don't shut up, I'm going to bust you in the head. I said, shut up. I said, shut up. And the person keeps talking. Right. And so that's thought provoking. Right. So that's provoking this person over into another area for them to be out of control. Watch this. It says any threats from the defendant before and or during the killing, whether the victim and the defendant had a poor history, whether there was an additional lethal lethal attack after the victim was already helpless evidence of brutality and the nature or number of wounds. However, many uh, jurisdictions concede that there is no bright arbitrary line when premeditation begins and or ends. Good God from a burning bush. And this is where the body of Christ is right now. Somebody somewhere with a collar on has is is premeditating how they're going to remove somebody, sabotage somebody, take their position, take their wife, their daughter, their church, their money, their investments. They're over there plotting, scheming, and planning right now. On the demise or and or the fall of someone else. Jesus. And God is not pleased. He's not pleased. No, he's not pleased. So my post for today, which is not popular. <laughs> Indictments 2023. Malicious treatments. Lack of reverence. I'll say it again. Indictments 2023. Huh? Okay. Okay. All right. So 
When we talk about indictments for 2023, thank God for um, Prophet David coming on for a few minutes, amen, and just sharing with us and, and, and shooting out this dialogue. This 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 thing is heavy, and we're definitely going to have him to come back uh, and, and complete this conversation with me, amen, because it, it is just wonderful. And how we got on this topic after I um, talk about this post the indictments of 2023. And when I began to read the news about the gentleman that killed his wife and the son, one of my spiritual daughters began to text me and she said, murdering spirit. And as I heard, I can hear her prophetically saying this, not out of her, her name is LaShawn. Um, I can hear her saying this as the prophet making an announcement that we must go into our spaces and levels of intercession. Amen. The different stages of intercession and warfare to combat this uh, spirit that's trying to take over. And everywhere you turn, people are talking about murder. And even as the, the pandemic has come into its place, because we're actually still in one, regardless of whether people think it or not, the spirit of murder is on between a margin between one and 100. It is on 98. We got a 2% margin from getting to 100% murder spirit. And it's happening in the homes. It's happening in the mindset of people going out to do mass murders. All right. You got in the church house how we're murdering one another with our tongue. The Bible talks about that little thing that's in your mouth, how little it can be, but how it can be one of the greatest uh, destruction uh, weapons uh, that can ruin, you know, you can ruin somebody's entire life, entire career with that little pink thing that is, uh, has greater ammunition <laughs> and effect than the greatest bomb that they are building to try to destroy nation against nation. And here we are, nation against nation, leader against leader, priest against priest, with that little thing in our mouth. And if you have not experienced it uh, face to face, begin to pray about it because I've been there. I'm there right now. Something was said that turned the heart of some other leader against me that haven't had a conversation with me. And, and the Lord began to show me. I said, why are they treating me like this? And he said, because somebody said to this other individual that honors you. But this one is subject to this leader. And that leader um, um, had given the instructions because of their position, okay, their prominence, right? And their 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 um 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 authority in the earth realm that made the other person subject. to the mal malicious treatment of another servant, which is me. I was like, wow, Lord. He said, don't worry about it. I'll deal with that, though. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll deal with that. But I need you to be aware of it. Now, when God begins to bring us to a space of awareness, it's not for us to go around and slander or talk about it or try to get people on our side to help rebuild us. No, 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 no. He's showing us these things so that we can be aware of it, get healed quickly, because I have need of you. I need you to begin to pray for those that despitefully use you or misuse you. I, I need you to pray for those that despitefully speak wicked and evilness against you because it's not really about you. It's like about what you represent. Watch this. And or righteousness. OK, so he needs us to begin to pray mercy. This is the time where you begin to pray mercy and that the heart 
of these individuals, the heart be, be cleansed, create in me a clean heart, renew the right spirit within me. That's when you go and grab that Psalm and you begin to pivot that in your prayer towards people that the enemy is trying to use against you and or other people, which is your colleagues far and near, whether you know them or and or not. All right. And so when we begin to understand the essence of why God allowed things to happen in our lives, then he's activating and pulling on his investment in you and his investment in, in me is that of the prophetic and that of prayer. So who is he pulling on right now? He says, I'm not pulling on the prophet to make an announcement and or to give a warning, but I'm pulling on the prayer warrior, the intercessor inside of the prophet first. I'm trying to speak English through here. Speak English, Jill. I have to tell program my mind to speak English. Okay. And, and so during this time span that we're living in, then I had to start doing study on the murdering spirit. Where did it derive from? Where did it come from? What's the root of it? Where did the origin of it, okay? And it started, as you heard Prophet David talk about, with Adam and Eve, okay? Generational. Then it went to the two children, Cain and Abel. And this is how Seth then was produced because of that morning, I feel God, that morning that was in the land. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Sometimes I don't enunciate it properly, right? And so the Lord is like, all right, I see the, 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 the tears and I hear the cries of my son and my daughter that I just produced. Okay, so so let me let me heal them right quick. And then he allowed the maidservant to be impregnated and to produce Seth. And I believe in my Holy Ghost spirit that, that, that God is raising up Seth's in this time span. And I will be back to talk about Seth, the Seth anointing, the productivity of Seth, Seth's purpose in this time span. What does it represent? How do we align ourselves and yield to it so that we can please God? Amen. Uh, my spiritual father always go, Father, it would please me to please you. And that's what this life is all about, is what we're doing, pleasing as unto God. Back in the days, they sang a song that says, is my living in vain? I don't want my living to be in vain vain. Oh, I used to love to hear that. Amen. I used to love to hear that. Uh, um, and my living shall not be in vain. I don't know how many of y'all know that song. I'm going to try to find it right quick. But it was an awesome, awesome song that they used to sing back in the days. My living shall not. <laughs> Oh my God, Be, if I can help somebody, okay? If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can cheer somebody, <laughs> then my living shall not be in vain. All right. This song was originally written by Mahalia Jackson. I believe that's the first name that I heard anybody sing it. Um, and she sang it, of course, much, much different from anybody else um, in this whole wide world. And uh, one of the most of us, we sing the chorus of it. Right. And, uh, uh, um um, but the next verse of it says, if I can do my duty as a good man ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world uprought, if I can spread love's message as the mess, as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. You know us as a people, we don't never go to the second stance. <laughs> The second verse of the only Donnie McClurkin. Donnie McClurkin know all 
of the hymns, every verse, and he don't need no book. It just comes out of him. Come on here. All right. And then it says, my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Oh my God, how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. I like that part. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, not separately, in unity. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. It is just a marvelous, marvelous uh, time to be uh, alive. And I bless God for you. Good day until the next time we meet. God bless each and every one of you.